Good morning. I am a few minutes late this morning. I was at the house making my wife a Mother's Day breakfast. She wanted hash browns and eggs and sausages and eggs and sausage I'm good with. I don't make hash browns very often, uh, so that took a little bit extra time, uh, at least time, <laughs> more time than what I thought anyway. But uh, I'm glad you are here with us watching this morning. Uh, really all day we're going to be in Luke chapter 12. I didn't know exactly how I wanted to break up the chapter, uh, but here in Sunday School we're going to get to the beginning of Luke 12, and it's kind of an introduction into some of the things that we'll be talking about this morning, and then in the, our 11 o'clock service we'll we'll be really getting to the meat of the passage. And then this evening, towards the end of Luke 12, 1 through 12, uh, verse 10, it talks about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And I remember growing up and uh, hearing about the unpardonable sin or the unforgivable sin. And it always sort of scared me a little bit and intrigued me. Uh, so we're gonna talk, be talking about that uh, tonight. It won't probably be a long discussion, but we'll take some time to do that. And we'll get the entire uh, first part of Luke chapter 12 done today. And, and I think when we do it Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, we're in it long enough to really, really, really grasp uh, what the passage is all about. So as, as people are joining and watching, Luke chapter 12 is where we're at this morning and why we're still waiting for some others to uh, get on here. A um, couple prayer requests I want to mention. Uh, I talked to Carrie Ludwig uh, yesterday evening, uh, and Dick um, is not doing well. Uh, he is going downhill very, very quickly. Um, she hasn't been able to go see him in several weeks. And she went there yesterday and was able to stand outside the window in the small little courtyard and they wheeled him up to the window. And she said he does not look good. And uh, the nurse had called her and said that um, he was failing fast. And so obviously Carrie is very upset. Be in prayer for her. Um, she is also aware of the fact that that's not really Dick, that's not her husband because of the dementia, the way he uh, is. Um, so she's, she's almost praying for the Lord uh, to take him home uh, rather than be alone without being able to see any of his family for weeks and weeks and weeks. And who knows how long this might go on, at least the facilities locked down. Uh, so pray for Carrie, even though she you know, I was thinking what would be best for Dick would be into heaven if it would still be very difficult for her and her family. So uh, definitely pray for Carrie and Dick. Um, we had a deacon's meeting last night, and uh, uh, we had some discussion and whatnot. I'm sure uh, we'll be able to get an email out to you later on today or tomorrow uh, when Don's here in the office, but um, I think... The vote uh, was uh, last night uh, to have the, the building uh, shut down until May 24th and, and hopefully being able to have our first service on, on May 31st. And uh, we talked about some things to do this summer since we kind of the whole spring was shot as far as um, maybe, uh, uh, maybe even doing VBS for a week since we had so many weeks off of of, of children's club on Wednesday nights uh, sometime in the summer if somebody would like to uh, be in charge of that uh, certainly talk to me maybe if we don't want to do an entire week of VBS maybe we'll do a uh, big children's day or or something like that um, we talked about doing something depending on how the 4th of July festive festivities go here in town if they're allowed or whatnot Maybe we'll do something that day. So uh, just be in prayer and be thinking about what would be effective at ministering uh, to our community. 
I know a number of you have talked about ministering to our church. As, as soon as things open back up, you want to have a big party at your house. And, and I know um, my, my family wants to do that too. Uh, one of the other things that was talked about was uh, just initially when we reopened, just having Sunday school and, and Sunday morning and, and not Sunday night for a while. Uh, just for the sheer fact we're going to be having to disinfect our building between services. Um, we also were talking about some of the Sunday school teachers, uh, so I might be in contact with some of the Sunday school teachers in the next few days uh, to be able to uh, see exactly what we want to do as far as Sunday school. We might have one big Sunday school class uh, right in this room for the first uh, couple weeks, but uh, just be praying for the deacons because um, obviously they've never been in this position before. We, we told Nathan last night, we said, read the Constitution. What does it say about viruses and pandemics? It, it doesn't say anything about that in, in the church constitution. So um, we're, just, uh, we're just praying and hopefully, uh, you know, as the deacon board and the leadership of the church, we'll be able to make the right decision. But uh, all plans are sort of um, subject to change, I guess is what we would say. So... Uh, pray for Dick Ludwig, uh, pray for the deacons as they make decisions regarding reopening uh, the church. Um, seems like I had one other prayer request. Uh, certainly, uh, when you're on there, you can type in comments, you can type in prayer requests as well, and then we can uh, share them on the email and the text and, and the Facebook page. Uh, so Luke chapter 12 this morning, we're just going to read uh, the first few verses, not the whole not the whole section, but uh, Luke chapter 12. In the meantime, when an innumerable number of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, Jesus began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear, uh, in inner rooms, will be proclaimed on the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom to fear. Fear him after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say uh, to fear him. We'll stop right there for now. Uh, so Jesus, if you recall last week in Luke chapter 11, Jesus has been in this verbal uh, boxing match with the scribes and the Pharisees sort of going back and forth. They attack him. He sets them in their place. They continue to trick him and, and try to test him. And he gives them logic. He gives them scripture. He gives them wisdom from above. And, and so they keep going back and forth. And, and chapter 12 is really the same day as Luke chapter 11. It's, it's just Jesus continuing to sort of walk through a field or a town or wherever he is. And, and he's heading slowly towards Jerusalem. And the Pharisees are, are following him. And they're, they're in this boxing match verbally back and forth. And what usually happens when there's a fight don't people kind of want to watch that out of curiosity? Uh, they gather around, whether it's a yelling match or whether it's a, uh, a fist fight or whatnot. People gather around and they watch and they start to wonder what's going to happen, who's going to win. And this is what is happening on this day. As Jesus and the Pharisees continue to go back and forth, the crowd gets larger and larger and larger. This huge, massive crowd it was so big, it was innumerable, and people were crushing one another. They were trampling one another. And in the midst of that, look what Jesus does in verse 1. He began to say to his disciples, first of all, kind of an interesting way to put it. Jesus talks to the disciples first of all. In the middle of this fight, in the middle of this huge crowd, now it doesn't say he spoke to the apostles first of all, because there's more disciples there than just the 12 apostles. 
There's a larger group, perhaps by now, of about 70 people that are following uh, Jesus. They're followers of Christ, and, and they're right there with him in, in the immediate vicinity of Jesus. And the, the scribes and the Pharisees are also working their way in, and, and the crowd is pushing uh, on the outskirts of the scribes and the Pharisees and the, the, the followers of Jesus Christ. And he focuses on teaching the disciples. There's thousands of people there. Jesus is heading towards Jerusalem. He's heading towards his death. And he is concentrating on teaching his followers. Now, Dr. Luke, I think the reason he recorded this here is he wants to teach us a very important truth. Uh, Jesus is focused on his followers. First of all, that's who he's focused on, but he does allow those who are outside the faith to hear the truth of the Word of God. It's very interesting. They can listen um, to Jesus Christ, uh, all those people that are not his followers, all those people that are outside the faith, uh, outside the church, if you will. Uh, they can listen but the priority of Jesus' teaching is to his followers, the disciples. Now, I believe there's two principles here this morning. Uh, first, uh, Jesus doesn't isolate his followers from the crowd. He doesn't separate them. Uh, he doesn't sort of like lock the church door to those that are outside the faith. Uh, they're allowed to come in. Uh, he's not isolating them from each other. Uh, they're invited to hear the truth, uh, even though, keep this in mind, even though many of those people uh, outside the faith that aren't his followers, many of those people are very hostile towards him. Even though they're hostile towards him, they are invited to listen to him. Jesus allows the crowds to hear so church, uh, the principle for us this morning would be, uh, so should we, right? We should allow outsiders into our church. We should uh, have people that aren't necessarily followers of Jesus Christ. We let them in to hear the truth of the word of God. Second principle, okay, is our priority, allow all the outsiders, the non-believers, the those that aren't followers of Jesus Christ to come in and hear the truth, but our priority is teaching followers, the disciples of Jesus Christ. Yes, allow the outsiders to come in, and hopefully, right, when they come in and they hear the truth of the Word of God, hopefully, prayerfully, they make a decision. You know, the application is that the church... Uh, Okay, this, this might be a little bit controversial, okay? Maybe not in this community, but uh, out in Facebook land, maybe if it gets shared and watched enough, you know, the church cannot and, and should not be primarily a seeker-sensitive church. Uh, that's not necessarily ever modeled by Jesus Christ or the apostles. When Jesus taught, he wasn't teaching and going after those who are outside the faith necessarily. He taught, first and foremost, the uh, disciples, the followers of Jesus Christ. That's who he targeted. Yeah, you know, there are a couple times where Jesus has some outreach sermons, if you will. Uh, Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4, uh, Paul, or I'm sorry, Peter, was uh, had outreach in his sermon and uh, thousands of people got saved and the church was started. But most teachings that you see in Scripture are geared towards the followers of Jesus Christ with the outsiders allowed to listen in. During my time in ministry, and I'm getting close to 20 years now, but uh, during my time in ministry, occasionally, I've been asked, um, why don't you have a salvation invitation every week? You know, why aren't you giving the salvation invitation every week? And I've said this, well, that's the milk of the Word of God. I think that's uh, 
the basic where you start with people. Um, but don't you want me to? I mean, occasionally, don't you want me? I mean, you'd get sick of my sermons if all I did was preach salvation week in and week out. You know, I, I giving salvation invitations, pushing people, and, and playing just as I am three or four verses or whatever week in and week out. You'd be like, Pastor Josh, give me something. Uh, I've already made that decision. Give me something. Give me some meat. You know, I definitely I do salvation invitations occasionally. Um, especially at big days. Not that we have Easter service this year. But big days. Um, even on a Mother's Day is a, a big day. Uh, typically, um, happy Mother's Day out there. I haven't said that yet. Um, but... <laughs> I don't have to give a salvation invitation every week. I do give other kinds of invitations, though, uh, what the text is based on, you know, regarding Christian living, uh, following God uh, on a daily basis. I give those kinds of invitations. I, I give those kinds of challenges. Um, but primarily, what we do is we teach the truth to the followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus began to say to his disciples, first of all, first. I mean, that's what Jesus did. That's what the apostles did. So, you know, we're not necessarily uh, seeker-friendly, at least the way that you read those books. Um, I don't think I'm cool enough anyway. Um, read Romans chapter 3, verse 10, and uh, tell me if these seeker-sensitive ideas are even biblical at all. I think the entire concept is flawed. Yes, um, we allow outsiders in. Um, we minister to them. We love them. We be as relatable to them as we possibly can be. But my, primarily, my primary responsibility as a pastor is to teach you, Christ followers. Okay? One of my pastor friends used the phrase, and I really liked it. He said, uh, disciple-driven. That's our goal as a church, to be disciple-driven. We're not seeker-driven. We're disciple-driven. Another phrase that I used uh, quite often, I also read this from another pastor down in Texas, uh, is gospel-centered community. You know, as a gospel-centered community, as disciples of Jesus Christ, as his followers, we get together and we study the scriptures together. And, and as we study the scriptures, we are, our eyes are sort of open sometimes to sin, and, and we get rid of that sin. Our eyes are sometimes open to, about hypocrisy, and, and we want to push that behind us. And, and what we do is this gospel-centered community is we grow closer to Jesus Christ together. Always together. We're unified. We're unified around the Word of God. We're unified around the Gospel, uh, preaching that to the, the outsiders in this world. And, and we are united together to live as best we can uh, following Jesus Christ. Now, when we do that, when we are unified together around the Gospel, and we're unified as a direction as a church, when we're all together and we're just tightening it together, it shows outsiders, you know, those outside the faith, what to expect. We teach the truth, and hopefully we go back to the Bible constantly. Certainly we rely on the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, but we're not primarily concerned with seekers in here. We're primarily concerned with making disciples. I've been to churches and I've watched uh, preachers who are primarily concerned with seekers and typically it seems like they tone down the gospel. It's not 100% um, the gospel, really, in my opinion. They don't talk about sin much. They don't talk about hell. Uh, they want to avoid persecution. They want to avoid the attention being drawn to them so they become a little bit more politically correct. Uh, they do whatever it takes to get people in the door. You know, sin 
is replaced the, with mistakes or setbacks. And there was a time in my ministry when I sort of stopped saying sin as much and I said mistakes and, and, and I finally caught myself. I'm like, wait a second. We can define sin as missing the mark uh, of God's perfection, uh, but you know, should we use mistakes very often? Uh, I, I don't, I, I think we need to say sin. I think we have to say hell. Um, you know, in some of these seeker-driven churches, professional attire, you know, a, a nice uh, shirt and, and slacks um, that's switched out for t-shirt and jeans. Now, I don't have an issue with t-shirt and jeans. I, I wear them, especially on Wednesday nights when I'm running around or, or doing something with kids. Um, wearing a suit jacket or a sweater and a nice shirt or whatever, it doesn't make me more spiritual. We went over that uh, last week. Uh, but my goal uh, in coming to church isn't, isn't try to be cool. Uh, it's not to try to get all these seekers in the door. Uh, my goal is to teach the truth of the Word of God. That's my goal. Teach the truth of the Word of God. First and foremost, to uh, the disciples, uh, just as Jesus was doing. And even before I broke this passage down, that, that's been my mindset and thinking for a number of years. My goal is to teach the truth of the Word of God to His disciples. Now, honestly, when we uh, think about this, um, most outsiders... That's going to leave a bad taste in their mouths. I remember I was at a funeral one time, and I've told this story before. And I, and I was talking about John 14, 6. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to heaven except through me. No one gets to the Father except through me. And, um, there was a lady in the crowd, and she was at this funeral, and she was just going like this, just shaking her head. The whole time, you know, the truth, the word of God leaves a bad taste in the mouth of many of these outside uh, the faith. Many people are going to be disgusted. Well, how come that pastor doesn't tone it down a little bit? You know, how come that church won't compromise for community convenience? And there's this massive amount of pressure to, to switch from prioritizing the followers of Jesus Christ in order to be hip and cool and prioritize the world. No, no, no. Our priority is on the followers of Jesus Christ. Teaching them the truth of the Word of God. Yes, allow the outsiders to hear. Yes, we reach out. Yes, we spread the gospel. Yes, we're friendly to people that we meet. Yes, we still do have salvation messages. Yes, we still have uh, invitations occasionally. You know, one of, one of the pastors that I highly respect uh, that I went to college, uh, where I went, the church where I went to college, he would say that we circle the wagons occasionally and, and we sort of force people to make a decision. But our goal, uh, our first priority is teaching the disciples of Jesus Christ, the followers of Jesus. I mean, right there in verse 1, all this huge crowd there, all these hostile Pharisees there, and Jesus looks at the disciples and he began to say to them, first of all, first priority of Jesus Christ was his disciples teaching them. And it's interesting, and um, I want to wrap this up here in the next couple minutes. Um, the first thing that he teaches them is, to be careful of hypocrisy. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning in the 11 o'clock service. Uh, so, I don't know about you, but I've never struggled with hypocrisy. Uh, in fact, my wife often says to me, Josh, thank you for being such a genuine and authentic person. I am completely kidding. My wife has never said that to me. I struggle with hot hypocrisy. And a lot of us do and have over the years. So uh, tune in at 11 o'clock and we'll be talking about hypocrisy, uh, what Jesus said about it anyway. So let's pray. Father God, we're thankful for this reminder this morning. 
uh, that uh, our first priority here as a church is making uh, disciples of Jesus Christ and, and pushing each other as this gospel-centered community uh, first and foremost. Yes, we reach out, Father, help us to be a church that uh, is evangelistic and does care about the community and the community knows who we are. We, we pray that even as the, the lockdowns lift, that we would have a, a very uh, effective outreach into this community. And um, Lord, it's not like we're all burnt out from uh, working with children on Wednesday nights for these last couple of months. We should be refreshed and, and ready to um, do some great things. I know we're, we're looking forward to vacations and different things, but Lord, give us wisdom and direction and discernment on how exactly we should reach out uh, to the children in, in this community uh, this summer when the lockdowns lift. And, but Lord, uh, help us never to forget that we have this massive priority, this first priority uh, to, to be disciple-driven, to encourage each other, to push each other, uh, to chase after Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I'm thankful for those that are on that Bible reading app, and, and many are, are doing things like that to push each other. And, and I pray that that would be, always be the case here at our church, that we're uh, pushing each other and, and trying to become closer to Jesus Christ, that uh, even when hypocrisy is evident, that we would be willing to speak up and, and speak out. Maybe it's on an individual face-to-face -face basis. Lord, that we're constantly pushing each other and, and we're disciple-driven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching.